Welcome to our YouTube channel. In this video, we are going to do substation gantry structure load calculation based upon European standard EN 50341 part 1. Generally for load calculation, we used to follow European standard EN 1991 for dead load, live load, wind load with various parts of this standard norms. Addition to that, for seismic load, we used to calculate based upon EN 1998. Also for load combination, we used to follow EN 1990. So these three standards generally for European standard, we used to call it as CEN, Central European and Normal. So these three standards we used to follow for general structures, but for electrical or electromechanical loads consideration for substation kind of structure, we need to follow separate codes which is called CEN ELEC C E N E L E C. So this is mainly formed by European Committee for Electrotechnical Standardization Team. So this European standard is mainly applicable for most of the European countries such as Austria, Belgium, Cyprus, Czech Republic, Denmark, Estonia, Finland, France, Germany, Greece, Hungary, Iceland, Ireland, Italy, Latvia, Lutiana, Luxembourg, Malta, Netherlands, Norway, Poland, Portugal, Spain, Sweden, Switzerland, the UK. So we need to refer this 50341 part 1 for substation gantry structure loads for European standard. Also this European code EN 50341 used to have two other uh, parts also like uh, part 2 and 3. This part 2 and 3 are uh, exclusively for the each individual uh, nationals. So for the various uh, national annexes we need to refer this uh, part 2 and 3 for uh, various factors uh, such as wind and uh, ice consideration. Also for load combination factors we need to refer that national annexes also. So now we can go to the uh, calculation methods for 50341 European standard substation gantry structure loads. Load calculation of uh, substation gantry structure used to have more uh, time duration activity. So due to this uh, time consumption activities, it is, is entirely classified into various stages. So in this first stage, we are going to discuss about the electromechanical input look uh, description uh, for other stages also on the screen you can see an excel sheet first we need the electromechanical input to, to calculate the structural loads of country so first is conductor type which are used so there are several uh, number of uh, conductors we need to tied with this uh, single phase like a single conductor per phase or twin conductor per phase or quad it uh, depends upon the configuration uh, electromechanical configuration so for a twin means it should have two numbers of conductor per phase for single it is one for quad it should be four numbers so let me have it as a twin and there are several types of uh, uh, conductor we can select from this uh, list. Addition to the uh, list also there are several uh, number of uh, type of uh, conductor. So based upon the type of the conductor we can get the uh, diameter and the area uh, that is cross sectional area also. According to that weight of the conductors also can be consider based upon the conductor type so we are having here a detailed table so these are the table for uh, conductors we are having the diameter and weight that is mass per kg kg per meter and its cross sectional area so after getting this input we need to find out or we need to get this input like a transmission line side at how much extent that a conductor to be spanned 
say for example if it is a substation gantry how much distance the next transmission line tower is uh, existing so that input we we required that is 100 meter we can consider here and inside the substation how long this conductor to be uh, extended for substation side so it is uh, 25 meter we can consider similar like uh, tension or suspension insulator details we need to get so for size of the tension and suspension insulator we can consider the height and the diameter as 160 mm and 350 mm respectively for both the tension and suspension insulators similar like number of discs per insulator is 60 numbers and length of hardware to hold this insulator we can consider as a 960 mm so total length is nothing but the summation of 960 mm plus that 160 into 16 times that is the 16 number of discs we are having so finally we are getting 3.53 meter is the length of our tension or suspension insulator and weight of the disc per weight we can consider as a 9 kg weight of hardware is a 97 kg so these are some assumed value uh, this will vary according to the uh, project requirements and suspension insulator whether we need to consider this a suspension insulator or only the uh, tension insulator is a sufficient we need to select from this if it is no ultimately that uh, entire load calculation to be considered as only tension insulators there won't be any suspension insulator to be considered to uh, to understand more about what is a tension insulator and suspension insulator, you can see the right hand side picture. So here the uh, insulator which is holding the uh, conductor is called as a tension insulator because this insulator is uh, subject to wire uh, tension uh, directly and in the vertical direction of insulator we can call it as a suspension insulator where it never take the tension load from the uh, conductor uh, directly so here we used to have some uh, droppers or uh, connectors which is to be uh, connected from two end of the insulators uh, tension insulators in some uh, projects they used to do this kind of insulator arrangement without having the uh, suspension insulator where this conductor this tension insulator and the tension conductor used to ha uh, carry a dropper where from this dropper there will be some uh, cable sealing end or some uh, termination equipment from their termination equipment the cables to be uh, connected to this conductor and from there underground cable trench to be followed to the substation so in that case the suspension insulators are not required but in this case where there is no equipment tapping a nearby gantry structure we need this suspension insulator so for this uh, philosophy and understanding various uh, mechanical parts of the gantry structure you can refer our youtube video where we had given the link in the in description so that will explain you what are these uh, mechanical parameters for gantry structures. So next input we record is the earth wire details. By default we can consider a sustrung which is a type of earth wire. In that outer diameter is 0 0.1, 0 0.0148 meter that is 14.8 mm and cross sectional area 130 millimeter square obviously the span also same as the conductor 100 meter and 25 meter from both the transmission line and substation side respectively unit weight we already having the table here from here that unit weight diameter and cross section area is picked from that so number of wires per tower we record is one in this project we can consider like that Similar like vertical loads due to earth wire, it is nothing but the total span divided by 2, that is 50% of the 
span of the earth way to be considered in our substation tower which we are going to do another 50 percentage will be considered in the nearest uh, tower so that in both the direction that is 100 meter in transmission line tower and 25 meter in substation side we need to consider a 50 percentage of that and multiplying the same value into g g e that is mass of the earth wire we are getting 31 kg so similar like for ice condition we need to calculate this ice condition will differ based upon the european standard we will see later and due to man with kit the total vertical load this man with kit also defined in uh, european standard we will see later 100 kg we need to consider this so total weight is nothing but we are going to consider this 100 kg plus this weight of earth wire and the next one is electromechanical loads these are the wire tensions we need to consider for most of the european standard we need to consider for three various uh, temperature like 0 minus 20 minus 40 minus 40 is the minimum temperature uh, design temperature we need to consider depends upon the various location of the uh, projects and 0 and 20 uh, minus 20 degree are uh, to be referred from the european standard for various load combinations of wind and ice along with the temperature so based upon this uh, low temperature that is 0 minus 20 and minus 40 we need to get the value from the electrical engineer or electromechanical engineer who used to perform this non-linear calculation for conductor and earth wire there are some various uh, non-linear uh, softwares are there available like uh, mathcad or some uh, excel uh, templates uh, which are to be developed in uh, individual organizations so based upon the temperature they used to calculate uh, these uh, values so for our calculation purpose we can consider 20 for 0 degree and 30 uh, 30 kilo newton for minus 20 degree 50 kilo newton for minus 40 degree similar like for earth wire 5 10 and 20 we can consider and the next one is a short circuit force due to this phase distance between two phases of conductors and due to the fault current range there may be some fault which will tends a axial force of a conductor even a transversal force also will be occurred so this force generally we used to calculate based upon I triple this is to be calculated by electromechanical engineer by considering the short circuit factors so we can consider directly the value as a 70 kilo newton this short circuit force may not be considered for most of the European nations because of their limited bay numbers in many of the substation they used to have only the gantry structures where it is going to tapping on the transmission line tower there won't be nearby substation uh, inside the substation gantries so this uh, probably this uh, short circuit force can be ignored in most of the european uh, standards but anyhow we will consider for our calculation this it means uh, we are going to design the substation gantries it means the gantries which are inside the substation it is not going to tapping from the a transmission line or likewise next one is uh, structure dimensions so these are the structure dimension we had considered based upon our earlier uh, video which uh, demonstrating about the uh, modeling of a substation gantry structures in both uh, stat uh, pro and uh, robot structural analysis which are the two softwares we had seen already the link for these uh, videos and uh, demonstrations on, on modeling of uh, substation gantry structures in robot and uh, stat pro are given in the uh, descriptions you can watch that uh, video also so these are the basic input for structural uh, dimensions say for example height 
and width of the girder is 1.2 meter respectively and uh, center to center a distance of a tower that is bay distance is 16 meter so clear span we are getting 14.8 meter by uh, subtracting this uh, width of the girder so similar like face to face distance is 4 meter and face to end uh, of tower is 3.4 meter so similar like a tower girder uh, fixing level is at 16 meter and uh, top width and uh, bottom width or depth of the girder is 1.2 meter respectively so 3 meter is a uh, base width of a tower at uh, girder sorry conductor spanning direction and uh, 2 meter is at the girder spanning direction and peak height we are considering as a 5 meter so these are well explained in uh, our uh, previous video modeling of a substation gantry structure you can uh, refer that before going for this uh, calculation and these are the effective conductor span where here we had uh, just uh, detected that uh, span of the insulators and tension insulators on both the side the transmission line side and substation side so these are the basic input to be required for the calculation of substation gantry structure loads thank you look description for more related videos subscribe to this channel for more updates thank you